good morning. Welcome to Tekken. I noticed in the beginner's tournament that we did on uh, the other day, a lot of people were getting hit by lows. And I thought it would be a good time to make a little video on how lows work in Tekken and how you can practice blocking lows. So, I thought I'd start out with one of the most infamous characters and lows in Tekken. Good old Brian down forward three. AKA Snake Hinge. Now, you've probably blocked this before. Uh, 29 frames, which is pretty slow. At tip range, it's actually 30 frames. Uh, but there's some things about this low. Uh, for example, if I just record Brian doing it here, and he's just doing snake edges like Brian players sometimes do, and I decide to push a button, I might get counter hit by it. I might also just like whiff a high over it. Come on, Brian. Do your snake edge. Do your snake edge. He really doesn't want to do it. This frame trap is too powerful. There we go. See, I whiffed that high, and I couldn't actually duck that because I was still in recovery, so that counted as a punish. Sometimes it'll count as a counter hit. So you have to make sure, first of all, that you're not doing anything. Now, you can be moving, and you can still block, but it can be a little harder. Like, if I'm just sidestepping, I want to make sure I'm still going to react. Whoa, that was crazy. I'm sidewalking. It's home and move, so it's gonna catch you, but I can still duck it. It's fine. I just have to have the wherewithal to. Another thing that I will often do with Snake Edge is think you can backdash it. You can't. You can't backdash the Snake Edge. It goes too far. Even Zafina. Maybe Eddie can. But just make sure if you see that Snake Edge, even if you're in a backdash, hit that down back. And, you know, it's a stagger low. Notice how he, like, her gets all herky-jerky when he... My block is minus 26, which means I can do my slowest launcher from Crouch, which for Safina is wall standing too. Different characters have different wall standing punishes. I'll probably talk about that more in the wall standing, or in a, in a video specifically about punishment. Just know, you want to do whatever your biggest, baddest launcher is. If you just want to do your 15 frame launcher for now, that's fine too. As long as you're getting a launch off of this, like, launches are good in this game. They get wall carry, they get damage. Better to at least get some sort of air tie and wall carry. Where we can then, you know, 53 damage from that Safina combo. I carry across half the stage. But if I do a better combo, I can get... A lot more damage. I could have got the wall there if I had done a better combo, but you can see the difference if well, if I don't get sidewalled. And if I really want damage, I can do back. Whoa, wow. <laughs> I guess it'd be that way sometimes. Should have practiced the Phoenix combos. What was I thinking? Yeah, if we do a bigger launch, you know, if I want to do back one, 66 damage versus the 53 off of this, but sometimes just getting that, getting the wall, that's what you need to do. Make sure you're launching stagger low. We also don't want to be whiffing out here. We don't want to be whiffing highs. If we think he's thinking about a snake edge, we want to make sure we're waiting so we can react and up. But Brian players have some tricks. They've got some tricks. They've been doing this for a while. One thing Brian players will like to do is like duck and then do an orbital. Hoping that you will like react to the duck and then eat that orbital. Even if you do, uh, you can just stand back up if you see that Brian's ducking and block that orbital. He doesn't really have any lows out of full crouch that you're scared of. So... This is not actually a mix-up. It's just like a janky Brian player thing that they'll try to get you to do. See, I, if you don't, if you if you let yourself get tricked, you can get tricked. But there's no real reason to get tricked here. He doesn't have anything that he can kill you with for doing this. See, I'm just standing right back up. I can block the orbital. This actually technically is a fuzzy duck. 
but it's it's more like I'm reacting to the fact that oh he's not actually doing a snake edge I'll just stand back up and then if he is doing a snake edge I'm just gonna stay down here come on do a snake edge there it is boom okay but I bet everyone or some of you have probably run into something along the lines of like uh, Ryan played just like a jet upper, and then he did like back one, dash up, snake edge, and then like you get hit by it, and you're like, ah, I just got hit by snake edge, just Brian player, threw my controller and uninstalled Tekken. Um, I have a secret for you. Pretty much everybody who plays this game has been hit by this whack ass Brian setup, or a very similar one at the very least. Let me record this here, and we'll go through why it works and how to avoid. Whoops, I did a down back three. That's actually like a smart kind of high level thing, because down back three hits grounded, but... Uh, not to say snake edges are not useful or smart. If they don't block the snake edge, then it's a real low for you. And if they've never seen these setups before, then these setups are real setups. Get upper, boom. I missed my back one. Back one, snake edge, boom. Okay, so why does this work? I gotta get a jet upper still. I'm gonna walk into this jet upper. Huzzah! Okay, it works because like we're tech rolling, we're thinking about other things, we're not like realizing that we can actually just react to this and duck. You can still duck while you're standing up. You don't have to like wait till you stand all the way up. Oh, keep screwing this up. Hold for it. There you go. So what most people do is we're like mashing tech roll, and then we're like, oh, I gotta stand up, and then we don't duck. I held down back out of instinct there, but it's very easy to just like hold back in these situations, because this, this back one is gonna spike. I can't tech roll, so oh, I'm gonna hold back. Oh no! But even if I hold back, I have like all the time to still react to that snake edge. It's just like a... A little sneaky, like, make you think that you can't block it in time, but you can. It's not a tech trap or anything along those lines. We could also just stay on the ground against characters who have better versions of this kind of thing. But Snake Edge doesn't do that much to me when I'm on the ground, then I can just stand back up. So... Always is an option if someone does do some sort of whack spike setup on you. Just let him hit you on the ground and then stand back up and then look at how much space I have now. I, I can't. I'm not getting comboed over here. But in the case of Snake Edge, um, you don't really ever have to worry about it. If you're thinking about the fact that he could do a Snake Edge and you're not mashing buttons. That's your thing about mash buttons. Uh oh. So. Like most things in Tekken, it's more about patience and muscle memory than it is about your hard reactions. Hard reactions don't start to come into play until you get into like more like high level stuff, like semi-seeable lows. But we're not gonna really deal with that stuff today. Um, but there are lows that are like faster than Snake Edge that aren't necessarily uh, that hard to block. So let's take a look at some of those. I think Jin has some lows that people were getting hit by. That are uh, not exactly lows that you have to eat or like have to guess on. Um, I think the, the big one here for Jin is gonna be Zen 4. Zen 4, and uh, I guess he can mix it up with like Zen 2, which is, let's take a look at these startup frames. Zen 2 is 22 frame startup, right? Not to use Zen 4, Jin. Zen 4 is 25 to 26 frame startup, which means there's like a 3 to 4 game frame gap there. That might not sound like much, but actually, uh, it, it matters because since these are not hitting on the same frame, I can duck fairly late in the animation. And whoops, I stood back up. 
I don't really have to worry too much about getting hit by this punch. See, I, I was holding down back there, but I still blocked the punch. I was a little late that time. And this is another stagger low, so do your big launcher. And yeah, again, holding down back, but I still blocked it, because I'm just ducking late in the animation so that I'm actually having this thing hit me before I tap down back. It's called a fuzzy duck. Even if I just want to, like, raw read this low, it's not that hard to just react to the low either. Um, oops. I didn't that time, but... Yeah, see, I can just react to the low. It's not that bad. But if you just keep in mind that this punch is that much quicker than that low, you just duck super late in his startup frames. And you don't even have to worry about whether or not he's in the punch or the sweep animation. It's just basically a free block. Yay! Now, uh, Jin has some other stuff, some other janky lows that I've seen... Uh, particularly Havoc is really good at landing on people. He's got this little string right here. Not this string. Uh, this string. Let's take a look at this string. How does this work? So if the jab hits... the If the jab hits, the low is guaranteed, it seems. But then you can block that low. You can still block the other one. And it's minus 13. If you block the jab and that low hits, you should still be able to block the last low. Yeah, I can still block this. And there's not a mix-up here either. He only has a low option, so it's just, is he going to do the low or not? If he blocks the jab, we can low parry the first low. If the second low hits us, we can't low parry the last low. If we block the second low, we can low parry the last low. So like the, the way low parries generally work is if you block something, you can low parry. If you get hit, you're not going to be able to low parry. Some lows break this rule, like Yoshimitsu Stone Feet, but most lows follow this simple rule that have like, like multiple low extensions, right? So, the best thing to do would be block that last low. Because you're probably not going to be blocking or low parrying the second low. You could, if you see this one, if he likes to do this a lot, block the jab and then just buffer a quick low parry. He can do a lot of stuff off that one jab, though. So, you kind of would want to read on this that he's going to go for it a lot. The gym player likes this string. But if that first low hits you, just block low and then punish. Because if he wants to finish it, you're going to get a... Well, for Zafina, it's not so juicy. But a lot of characters have pretty juicy 13 frame wall standing punishers. And... Let's see. That's a lot better than eating 26 damage and being minus 3 at this range. Instead... I'm plus seven at this range, which for Zafina is a really good situation. I would love to be plus seven at this range pretty much all the time. All right, Jin has more stuff though. Uh, he's also got, uh, how do you do this? This thing. He's got that and he's got this, this low. Now this, Low, uh, it's like a hell sweep animation, and he has the two one four, one of the best strings in the game to mix it up with. The thing is, uh, this low says twenty frames, right? And twenty frames is usually a, an area where you're really not gonna see that low unless you're like Arslan Ash or you know a, one of the top 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 players in the world. But the watch his like animation. He does this like little butt wiggle. You see the butt wiggle? 
the butt wiggle is not included in like the startup frames or something because this low is actually mad easy to duck. See, I that you have like all day. It's like a snake edge. It says 20 frames, it's not. So and then the other thing is like we can just duck kind of late in the animation just like we do with other stuff even if we delay 214. 214 is delayable. I gotta not put all that extra movement in. Yeah, I'll delay the 214, but it doesn't matter because the butt wiggle's such a tell. Play. Like, okay, you're delaying your 214. That's cool, but I can still just wait and then duck, and I can. Oop. Sometimes the 214 will catch you, probably. If you're a little happy on ducking, but if you stay chill until he does the butt wiggle, you're gonna be fine. See? No problems. Now, uh, some better options for Jin, for all you Jin players out there, uh, instead of doing like 4 4 into Zen Sweep or doing this um, butt wiggle hell sweep. Uh, you could do mix up 2 1 4 and 2 1 down back 4 or 2 1 down 4. You don't have to finish the string, you can just go right into pressure. I think, in particular, down 4 is just like really good because it'll go under jab retaliation. But if you're pretty confident that they don't want to press here because you've done 2 1 4 enough on them, then you know, she's down back 4. That's plus three. Very good. The other thing, if you like doing stuff like buttons into mix-up, uh, you could do like uh, a page from Devil Jin's playbook, like do like laser scraper and then go into your crouch dash and do a crouch dash mix-up. Another option for you. Uh, better options, more reliable options than. Uh, the butt wiggle or the zen sweep obviously if they have a hard time reacting to zen sweep you can let it rip uh the best place to use seeable lows like a 25 frame low best used on wake up remember how we talked about how snake edge is kind of hard to react to when people are getting up because people are thinking about other stuff and like you can kind of like hide the fact that you're going into Zen, you know, if you get like, I don't know any of Jin's wall combos, but, you know, you can do like Savage Sword, go into Zen, whoops, uh, do Savage Sword or whatever, and go into Zen and boom, you know, that kind of hides it. He's probably got better setups than that, where like you could do, I don't know, boom, boom, or like, yeah, you could maybe do like a back three ender and go in there, or like a, you can have like three, two. One. Yeah, so you could do something like this. Maybe. Boom. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Play around with it with your character. See where your, like, seeable lows might be useful as wall oaky things. Um, a lot of characters have seeable lows that you can use in oaky situations. In fact, one of the better ones. I guess I'm not better low, but one of the more common ones that you run into is this character, Lily. Lily, of course, has a snake edge, just like Brian, which is, uh, you know, like that's not the input. This is the input. You know, 30 frames so it looks like a snake edge, uh, but she also has this low, which is 24 frames, and. She has, you know, stuff from down back as well. Uh, that low's actually real. I thought she had a snake edge from down back. Yeah, she does. But it's 22 frames, right? So she's got a lot of these, like, semi-seeable... Well, not semi-seeable, but, like, seeable, but not snake edge-type lows. And Lily players, or people who use other characters that have this stuff, Lars is a good example... They'll use this as a mix-up, so this is actually a little trickier to deal with. Like, if I do this with Lily, that's 24 frames. And if I record, uh, say, this... Oops, I didn't mean to sidestep. 
These are both 24 frames, which and they have the same audio cue, which is like insult to injury, right? So I have to actually react to the down back four, or down back three plus four in this case. And I was a little late there. So these are the type of things where you just have to sit in training mode and practice reacting to this low until you're more comfortable seeing it. There's not like a shortcut. You can see I don't actually uh, have that much muscle memory on this particular low. I need to practice this more. Oh my gosh, little... That's a good practice. Oh, I blocked that. I... That was a lie. I didn't block that. And yeah, if I even like think about fuzzy ducking, I'm gonna get clipped. Which is different than before, where we had a frame buffer. There was a frame gap between our mid and our low. This time they're the same. Which means I have to be a little bit more on point to block this. So this is good. I should do this more often. See, I'm already getting a little better. Oh, I got hit there. The audio cue. The audio cue is dirty. It's the same sound. Same sound effect. Almost. Almost? You gotta see it just a little bit sooner than you would normally. You can't duck super late in the animation like you were, were doing before. It's just not gonna work because the frame count is the same. And we have to react to the fact that she's doing the low. So this is a, this is not really a, tr this, this is a mix-up, it's a 50-50, but we can still react to the low. So it's not like a true 50-50, but it's a much more scary mix-up to deal with than the other mix-ups that we were looking at. Those were like non-mix-ups, right? This is just a mix-up, but the low is seeable. You still have to react to the low, though. I'm not doing. There we go. Oh god. I need to practice that more, clearly. Uh, there's another type of low that I noticed was getting a lot of mileage. So we're gonna just switch characters again. Go over here and grab... Uh, oh, I'm in DLC already. I don't know how I got there. Oh, I... There we go. This guy, good old King. King actually has uh, two really dirty lows that we can talk about. Uh, the first one is good old full crouch down forward one plus two. Now this is a low that comes out of full crouch, and it's weird because it's a punch, not a kick. Normally low sweeps are kicks, right? So a lot of people get fooled into thinking this is a mid, and you stand block, and then, you know, this is a full-on launcher for, like, 60-plus damage. The thing is, it's 32 to 34 frames startup. You have all day to block this bad boy. Uh, notably, it is minus 12, which is because it's so slow. Um, so what you actually want to do is, like, low pair this thing. Unless you have like, I don't know, if you're like Akuma or something, full frame launch him. But for the rest of us, we just low parry that. However, uh, it can get a little complicated when King is gonna like let his wall standing launcher rip, right? Full crouch down for two. This is another situation where we can fuzzy duck. Because there's like 15 frames of difference between the animation of this and of the launcher. And even when it was just like three or four frames, you saw the difference in how I really didn't have to deal with a mix-up. So all I have to do is wait for King to start moving and then do a delayed duck. And I will always, always, always block both of these. But um, we want to low parry that low. So instead of doing a down back, do a down forward. And that's a really consistent way of dealing with this. Don't have to deal with the mix-up at all. As soon as King is ducking, I'm just gonna wait for him to start up, do a delayed low parry, 
and I'll never get hit by this. Also, keep in mind, if you do block the mid, that is a minus 14 move. So, try to get that punish. Cool. It can be a little tricky because you're buffering the low parry. And you're ready to do the low parry combo. This is where, like, defense in this game is so impressive because, like, you're doing so many things at once and you have to constantly be ready for either of, you know, multiple outcomes to happen and have that punish ready or that combo ready. It's uh, definitely worth practicing this type of stuff. Because, yeah, like, if you can get that punish in a match, that's pretty swag. Uh, King has another thing that we should talk about, though, and that is the infamous, uh, one of the most infamous round enders in all of Tekken with this thing. Alley Kicks. So, he, the way this works is, let me actually go back to King. He can do up to three of these. If he does all three and you eat all three, he's gonna be plus seven. And you're in this like weird stun state. You also can't block the mid if you eat all three. He can do the full string. He can also do the mid after two. Or one. He can do low mid, low low mid, or the full low, triple low. Whoops. In a mid. So triple low. That was double low. Triple low in a mid. So this gets frustrating because you're like, oh, he's just going to spam the lows. And then he does low mid. And then he does low low mid. And then he just does all the lows and does nothing. And then runs up and like, throws you or something. I don't know. It gets really annoying, right? So... How do we deal with this? Support the full string here. Uh, what I do is we, this follows the same rules as other lows. If you get hit, you cannot low parry the next hit. If you block a hit, you can low parry. If you try to punish that low, and he continues the string, you're gonna get hit. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is, if you do block this last hit, it's minus 15. So... That is a punish. So... What I like to do is block, and then low parry. So if he hits this, I'm gonna block, I'm gonna low parry. Now if I have a read on when he wants to go mid, I'll just read the mix up and punish the mid. It's like if I block the first hit, I'm buffering a low parry. If first hit hits me, I'm gonna block, buffer, low parry. This mix up is not really in King's favor, right? Because I get a low parry combo for guessing right, which is, you know, not usually that much damage. Or if I block my mid, I'm getting my 15 frame Punisher, which you know, can also be a lot of damage depending on what character you have. So, this is actually like a good situation as a defender. I can just like, you know, I, what, what am I getting? I'm taking eight damage for this little mid? Just eight damage. What do I care if I get hit by that? Eight damage and it resets neutral. Versus like a 50 damage combo. Or a launch. Like, that's definitely not in King's favor. Which is why it's usually used as a round ender, because King players know that this low kind of sucks. So yeah. Usually that first one's gonna hit, you block the second, you buffer the low parry, you get it. If he goes mid, who cares? 
It does wall splat, so be careful at the wall. And if he keeps doing it, you're gonna get a feel for when he goes mid. But usually if you low parry him a couple times, they'll stop doing it. Because it's just kind of not actually that good. Some King players will just keep doing it because that's like their whole game plan and then you'll just beat them and take all their points and then they'll leave and, I don't know, write, write angry Steam reviews about how Tekken sucks now. Alright, one more thing I want to talk about is sometimes people, like, get salty over getting hit by stuff that's, like, real. Um, like, Shaheen is probably a good example of this. Um, you know, characters like Mishima's with Crouch Dash mix up, uh, slide characters with slide mix up, any character with a unseeable sweep. Like, it's, those are, like, actual mix-ups that these characters can create. So, you know, if you're gonna get hit by this low, then, like, yeah, you can react to the fact that Shaheen is crouching and inputting the little dash input, but Shaheen can do this, right? Shaheen doesn't have to do the low. He can go, this is what Shaheen players do. So now, you're in a situation where Okay, I can react to this low. Oh my god, I got hit by this mid. This game is trash. I'm gonna throw my controller and uninstall Tekken. Uh, that's just a mix-up. Like, characters that can enforce actual hard 50-50s and can like bait you into ducking by doing like things like uh, this. Like, You'll see like law players and anyone who plays a slide character can like do this little, you know, this is a, a similar butt wiggle to Jin's, but like the important thing here is he doesn't have to do the low, right? I can just get down here and, and fake out and go for the mid. You can do like a fake out into the low. This sort of stuff is very good. It's like... You're, you can see that he goes into the slide animation, but you can't react to if he's doing the mid or the low. And look at this, 16 frame low, 16 frame mid. There's nothing you can do other than like read a mix up and guess, right? That's why slide characters are usually like, I don't think any of them are considered like weak. They're all pretty good. They're all considered, I, I think, Shaheen won a lot of tournaments early in the game's life. Uh, Law is pretty good. You got like Double in Japan plays Law really well. Rip plays Law. Uh, Lee, not as many Lee players. Um, Fighting GM comes to mind as like a really good Lee player who's had great results. This stuff is real. You can't do anything to game this mix up or react to this mix up. You just have to guess. Same thing with Mishima Crouch Dash. Uh, same thing with like Leroy or Fakumram Hell Sweeps. Even at the highest level, those are real mix ups. So, hopefully, this video was a little helpful on what you can do uh, to block lows, practice against defending lows, and better ways to apply lows. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free. You can leave questions in the comments, or if you're in the Michigan Tekken Discord, always can post your questions in there in the Beginner Resources channel. I'll catch you guys next time, and uh, good luck, have fun.